I haven't been to a bookshop for months, but thankfully uh, I do still get books sent to me from Amazon. And this uh, tome arrived today in the post. Uh, it's called After the New Testament, A Reader in Early Christianity, uh, 100 to 300 CE, Common Era, AD, by Bart Ehrman. And this is published by Oxford University Press. And it's a, right, it's a little, little gem, this, actually. And uh, it says on the back cover, Revealing the rich diversity of the early Christian movement, this book brings together an extensive collection of texts from the 2nd and 3rd centuries, both orthodox and heterodox, in inverted commas. Selections include the writings of the Apostolic Fathers, the writings of Nag Hammadi, the early pseudepigrapher, martyrologies, anti-Jewish tractates, hesiriologies, canon lists, church orders, liturgical texts and theological treatises. Featuring large textual excerpts, entire documents wherever possible, concise introductions and lucid up-to-date translations. This is ideal for courses in early Christianity, Christian origins and early church history. And indeed it's got some rave reviews uh, from academics on the back. And um, looking through this, I just wanted to share with you um, some of the uh, the letters written by so-called Jewish Christians. Now, these are not people who followed the Apostle Paul, but continued to uh, obey the Jewish law. To all intents and purposes, they were Jews who accepted Jesus as the Messiah, as a human Messiah and as a prophet. Um, one of the texts is the Gospel of the Ebionites, um, which I'm not going to read uh, today, but because I want to look at... Uh, a letter I wasn't really familiar with. It's called The Letter of Peter to James and its Reception. And I'll just read to you what Bart Ehrman uh, has to say about it. And then I'll read a couple of extracts from uh, the letter because it's really, really interesting. Uh, if you're interested in the great diversity of doctrine and faith in early Christianities to such a degree that you could even speak of early Christianities, plural, um, the people have very, very different beliefs about the law, about Jesus, about God, or even if there was one God, maybe more, there's more than one God. Uh, but anyway, that's a different subject. In the letter to uh, of Peter to James, um, this introduction is by Bart Ehrman. He says, the letter of Peter to James is one of a number of early Christian writings produced in the name of Jesus' disciple, Simon Peter. It does not survive as an independently uh, transmitted letter, but only as the preface to the Homilies of Clement, a collection of stories and sermons by Clement of Rome. The collection, the account of its reception by James, that's the brother of Jesus and leader of the church in Jerusalem, is also part of this preface. The date of the composition of these works is difficult to determine, but they are probably to be situated in the early third century. The letter of Peter urges James to pass along the accompanying sermons carefully and only to those who are worthy to receive them. The clear concern is that Peter's teachings not be corrupted by those who have a different understanding of the truth. Both the letter and the reception are Jewish Christian writings, as seen in their emphasis on emulating the actions of Moses, on keeping the law and on opposition to the person Peter calls the man who is my enemy, commonly understood to be none other than the Apostle Paul, who taught that salvation comes to all people, Jew and Gentile, apart from following the law of Moses, and who urged Gentiles not to be circumcised. Uh, as you can see in the letter of Galatians, he talks about that. Paul's notion stood in sharp contrast to the views of Jewish Christians like the Ebionites, as seen here, for example, in the insistence by James, the brother of Jesus himself, that only one who has been circumcised is a believing Christian. So that's Bart Ehrman's introduction. And the letter of James begins, so the letter of Peter to James begins, Peter to James, the Lord and Bishop of the Holy Church, peace be with you always from the Father of all through Jesus Christ. Knowing well that you, my brother, eagerly take pains about what is for the benefit of us all, I earnestly beseech you not to pass on any, not to pass on to anyone of the Gentiles the books of my preachings, 
which I hear forward to you. And of course, we know in Matthew's gospel that Jesus says, said that he was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And Peter here is saying, in effect, that he was only sent to preach to the Jews, nor to any one of our own tribe before probation. So even to the Jews, they have to be tested first. But if someone worthy of them has been is examined and found to be worthy, then you may hand over to him in the same way as Moses handed over his office of a teacher to the 70. So here is Peter comparing himself with Moses, the Jewish prophet. And then skipping to chapter 2, uh, the letter to of Peter to James says, In order now that the same may also take place among us, hand over the books of my preaching in the same mysterious way to our 70 brethren, that they may prepare those who are candidates for positions as teachers. For if we do not proceed in this way, our word of truth will be split into many options. This I do not know as a prophet, but I have already, I, I have already the beginning of the evil before me. For some among the Gentiles have rejected my lawful preaching and have preferred a lawless and absurd doctrine of the man who is my enemy. So this is Peter talking about Paul, referring to him as uh, the lawless and absurd doctrine of the man who is my enemy. And indeed, some have attempted, whilst I am still alive, to distort my words by interpretations of many sorts, as if I taught the disillusion of the law, and, although I was of this opinion, did not express it openly. But that may God forbid. So Peter is absolutely rejecting the idea that openly or in a, in a private way that he rejected the law. No, he upheld the law of Moses, he says. And God forbid that I should have preached anything other than that, he says. For to do such a thing means to act contrary to the law of God, which was made known by Moses and was confirmed by our Lord in, in its everlasting continuance. So he's saying here that Jesus himself taught that the law would continue the jewish law should be obeyed for he said the heaven and the earth will pass away but one jot or tittle shall not pass away from the law now this is a quote from uh, matthew 24 to 35 and 5 18 there's two verses there in matthew that, that's pretty clear so to, ending that there and just reminding ourselves of what paul taught in uh, his letter to the Ephesians. Paul says, He, Jesus, has abolished the law with its commandments and ordinances so that he might create in himself one new humanity in the place of two, thus making peace. So he believes that Jesus taught the abolition of the law, even though in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, verse 17, he says, Do not think I have come to abolish the law. I have not come to abolish it, but to fulfil. So the precise opposite of what Paul is teaching. And in this letter of Peter to James, Peter is crystal clear that he himself upholds that teaching of Jesus, which we see in Matthew's Gospel, and uh, calling uh, Paul, who is my enemy. Um, and I think that's probably enough for now. Now, I, I, we ought to say, and uh, uh, Bart Ehrman uh, would doubtless say, and I would agree with him, I don't think this letter is actually from the historical Peter uh, to James. For a start, people like uh, all of, virtually all of Jesus' disciples, what we would perhaps call today peasants, they were uneducated. And in fact, there's a, a verse in Acts when the Sanhedrin actually says that they are untutored, they are uneducated people. Uh, they didn't go to Galilean University and learn how to read and write. They couldn't read. They couldn't write. Uh, they weren't in a position to write letters um, uh, and, and neither was James. So uh, I think uh, that this is, even though it's not by Peter, uh, nevertheless, it does reflect the views, I, I think, of Jewish Christianity and very likely would be Peter's view as well. Uh, historically so even though it's not by him i think it probably faithfully reflects the historical peter's own views uh and definitely reflects the views of james because even in the new testament 
in Acts, it has James clearly upholding the Jewish law. Um, so this is a very different kind of Christianity than you'll hear preached about today in the churches. It's very different from Paul's Christianity, but it bears witness to the great diversity of Christianities we see in the early centuries. Um, Jewish Christianity ultimately became extinct, uh, perhaps to be reborn as Islam, as uh, another text I quoted in another video once said. Islam, in a sense, carries that same uh, belief about Jesus being a, a prophet, a messiah, not God, uh, and uh, teaching in the main the continuance of the Jewish law, not teaching its abolition as Paul did. Anyway, I hope that was of some interest. Until next time.